and we are continuing our video um, and into the next dish as we prepare the Seder meal for this Monday Thursday. We have let our lamb uh, sit for uh, right now. It's it's more than uh, the prescribed hours, uh, about three hours extra. So we're looking at 15 hours uh, in its marinade. Wonderful. There has been a slight color change, and uh, so you see it there, uh, but still a lovely texture and a very solid piece of meat. If you leave meat in a marinade too long, it can get a little over tenderized, and you begin to take on the flavor of the marinade more than the meat, and you want to find a balance. Any more than 24 hours in a marinade as strong an acid as this, is a little bit too much and you start to even with a meat like lamb you start to lose that but what we have done is for those that really don't like the more wild flavor of lamb or if you're using goat um, my parents tonight will be using moose uh, for their meal um, if you uh, leave it in too long you really start to lose that wonderful flavor of meat so we're putting that right into the roaster after I do one thing I just realized um, and we're gonna put the uh, we're going to put some other ingredients in the roaster as well, which is why we're doing this with another dish. So the other dish that we're going to be doing is the um, is the parve. Now a parve, you've probably heard of parves, especially if you know Dairy Queen. They have that peanut buster parfait. This is nothing like that. Let me wash my hands. So. This parve is, is a vegetable parve. It's almost like a vegetable stew. And really, if you wanted to add lentils to it, um, it, uh, it, it makes for a full meal. And if you're a vegan, this is a nice recipe. If you like something that goes alongside just about any dish, this is wonderful and as a spring summary. Full flavor, lots of vegetables, a variety of vegetables, high in vitamin C dish. This is this parve, but it gives you your full protein spectrum. So itself could be a meal, a stew to itself. Uh, and we're gonna get to that. The reason that we're doing these together, because they share common ingredients. And the main one is celery. When you roast, when you roast any kind of um, uh, strong flavored meat, you need something to offset it in the pot. Yes, you can let it sit there in and, and, and whatever um, meat sauce or Worcester sauce or, or marinade, and that's fine. We've already put the parsley to this. I'm gonna take some of these smaller strands out because they will be good for the dinner. All right. So you need just a few. Give them a quick rinse. And this is great, you know, sometimes when you get celery and you have those ones on the outside that are rougher, that have been kind of banged up and whatever, um, sometimes they get pulled off by the grocer. I think that's terrible. I think the more you do that, the more you lose what's underneath, which is a good one. And you want to put these just underneath. Now, this particular, and I can show you, oh, let me see here. There we go. Um, there we go. Hold on. Um, I can show you in, in the pan here. You can see this already has a, a, a bottom uh, grate, which will keep the meat off the base of the pan. And you do want to do that. You don't want this meat sticking to the pan. So you want to at least to have this. If you don't have one of these, don't go buy one. Use celery. Celery is great at the bottom of the pan. If you want to keep the grease off the bottom of your pan, this is nice and stainless steel. It's not going to have any problem getting cleaned. But if you have a pan that tends to stick a little bit, throw some parchment paper under there, then put the celery on, and then put your meat on top. I've set the oven to 275, given the time frame that I'm working with. And now we are ready to put the meat in. There's one other thing that needs to go in here as well. All right, so the meat's in, and I'm gonna put the, the marinade, like I said, I'm gonna put that right overneath because there's all those flavors. Don't lose those flavors. Those are delicious flavors. They've been mud, muddling together for a while, and so that's sort of what it looks like. Well, here we go. Looks like in the pot. It looks like in the pot. I got a couple of cameras on the go here just to make sure we get this. So a couple of cameras, there we go. That's what it looks like in the pot. And once it's in the pot like that, I wanna take and add to the, the liquid that's in there with the marinade, I want to add some more grape juice. And if you're using wine, wine is fine. 
uh, but for the amount that we're using here, uh, you better be wine you made yourself because that was just a very expensive pour. That was about a, uh, a dollar or 75 cent pour of grape juice. That was probably 15 bucks in wine. So don't use wine unless you really insist on using wine. Um, when I'm dressing this to put into the, the cook, yeah, there's lots of fat on the top of the meat. Put a little bit of olive oil anyway, all right? Because what we're about to do is season it. This is a final seasoning because you have just poured off a lot of the seasoning, a lot of the salt. Just put a, just a, just a bare, you know, a pinch, or not a lot, not a lot of salt. And pepper. Yes, a lot of pepper. And I am going to put, why so much pepper, Sandy? Because a lot of this pepper is going to stay with the fat. It's not going to be something that you ingest, but the flavor of it is going to go through. All right, and that just sits on top. So the oven is now at the right temperature at 275. You can hear it kind of whirring there in the background. And you want to, if you have little vents on the top, this is a time to keep the vents closed. All right, this is a relatively slow cook um, lamb roast, and in it goes. And you want to set your um, your roast on the top where the heat rises, and be ready because one of the dishes will go in the bottom of your oven. The parve is all done stove top, and it's 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 a simple thing to put together. Really, you're chopping up vegetables, but first, after touching meat, I'm going to wash my hands. Whenever you're doing a recipe, especially sort of a sauce or stew recipe, you want to look over the whole recipe from top to bottom. And I will include the recipe for this at the bottom of, of this uh, video in the description section. Get a saucepan. Good size. I use this a lot for spaghetti sauce. That's the sort of saucepan that you want. Uh, if it's too much smaller, all the ingredients won't fit because you are going to use some fixed size stuff that, well, you'll see what I mean in a minute. And I'm going to start... I'm going to move this heavy board over just a little bit. All right, I'm going to put this on a medium heat and just the center of the burner. And if you have the option of just using center burner, wide burner, don't generally go over the size of your pot. I know it cooks things faster, but you're going to, it's a safety thing and it's also, you're going to overcook. Let the center of the pot spread, let the pot spread the heat around, not the burner. Okay, so you're starting to heat up your pot. You don't want to leave it empty for too long. That's not good for the pot. It's not good for the ingredients you're going to put in. The next ingredient you're going to put in is cumin seed. Cumin seed, if you don't have cumin seed, then hold off in a minute and you're going to be adding powdered cumin. Powdered cumin I find dries out, especially something that's like this, dries it out too much. So I like to use cumin seed. Oh, plus the smell is just, I wish you could smell this. Could you smell this? So good, okay. So I want to put in just a teaspoon's worth, not a whole lot, but enough to sort of cover the bottom. You know, have you ever made popcorn in a pan like that? Put half as much as you would have put in popcorn. So it's covering the bottom, not covering the bottom, but sort of spread out over the bottom of the pan. Then what you want to do is just let that sit there for a minute. Just let that sit there and, and start to absorb the heat. While we're doing that, we're going to um, chop up a little bit of our celery, so some of the bigger stalks that you have left. We're going to chop up some celery. There we go. Maybe one more. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, one more. There we go. Well, it's going to work out to about a cup, cup and a half of celery. And really, with this dish, you want to measure out. Um, let me get a little better into the bottom there. Yeah. If you wanted to measure out for each of these ingredients, the peppers and the celery and the beans and the tomatoes, a cup each, we're sort of going to try and balance things that way. Now, you want to cut up the celery fairly fine so that, you know, that, um, that stringiness you can sometimes get with celery. So a lot of that's gone. Celery is a great practice vegetable if you're just learning and working on your knife skills. Nice straight vegetable with good firm edges. Oh, vegetable herbs, really. And uh, now I can start to see 
the I can I can smell the, the cumin just starting to roast. And this is the time, very gently, very gently, to just sprinkle in. about three tablespoons of olive oil, and a nice rich olive oil if you can manage it. And just spread those around. All right, just spread those around. And with that, add, now I have dried oregano. If you have fresh oregano, add it later. But where you have any dried, you add with the oil. And you let the oil, there we go. And now, now the oil is heated up and it's just starting to give that, those dried herbs a bit of a, inf infusing that oil. So this is going to spread the flavor around. It's going to toast up that cumin, and you're going to get this tremendous flavor all the way through. The next, you're sort of making a, a, a bit of a, a, a hot salad dressing. To this, add one tablespoon. Ooh, that's noisy. One tablespoon of, I love this pre-diced stuff, it's great, um, of diced, chopped, uh, minced uh, garlic. Whatever size garlic you like. I like it this size. Now, watch your cumin. If it starts to turn too dark, you're going to get sort of a bitter burnt flavor. And so you may need to take it just off the heat. And if you do, turn the, turn the burner off. You don't want to put your hand on that. So you've got the, uh, the olive oil, you've got the, uh, the, the cumin, the oregano, and the garlic in there, just sort of seasoning up together, spreading that flavor around. And we are just finishing cutting up our celery. And just, it doesn't have to be perfectly minced. If you're very particular and you want it perfectly minced by all means, but uh, this can be a bit of a rustic uh, cut on your, on your vegetables, that's fine. Um, you're not looking all together for it to even cook. Whatever you do with your celery though, make sure you cut up the leaves and include them in. Now, I put the celery in early and um, putting celery in early, yes, it's gonna soften it up, but because we're using um, a lot of other soft vegetables, um, we want to uh, have the celery softened up so it doesn't, it still has its crispness, but it doesn't offset. But this is the time, and I've already pre-cut the onions, about half a cup of onion. Now, um, you can put that back in the heat because there's now lots of water in that celery. Compost, okay. The next thing we're going to add is about a cup and a half's worth of red pepper. I like a lot of red pepper in this. Uh, if you don't like, uh, if you prefer green pepper, this actually, the original recipe uh, that I had for this uh, asked for green pepper. I find red pepper's better, it's sweeter, it matches the flavors. Um, if you wanted to use a yellow pepper and, and uh, have different uh, color profiles and, and a more uh, exuberant salad, uh, parve, by all means. What you want to do though is cut this up into fairly small pieces. So, um, you know, we're talking about a dice. All right, not a tight dice, but definitely small enough that it will cook fairly evenly uh, with the celery. You don't want it too small, and then it will get too soft too quick. You don't want it too large, and then you have chunks in there. So find the balance, find the balance. And that's what we always look for is a balance of flavor. Right, balance of flavor, balance of ingredients. So in goes the red pepper, or whatever pepper you have. And as you um, do this, make sure that um, as, yes, as you're doing this, uh, make sure that you're um, watching that pot. Uh, let's say it's at a moderate temperature. See, I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Because what you don't want is scorching. That, that is what would ruin uh, a parve. It has to have that sort of fresh flavor. One of the things we're going to uh, um, introduce here in a minute is your citrus choice and you have a lot of choices you can go any number of ways depending on where you're serving this with now i'm serving this with lamb so i'm going to go with something that i know uh, a citrus choice that i know goes with lamb 
Um, lamb does lend itself well to uh, a number of citruses, but we've already included in our marinade uh, for the lamb tonight, we've already included lemon. So I don't want to double up on lemon because that means we're going gonna, gonna, gonna to be craving lemon pie afterwards. And if you are serving up uh, date squares afterwards, and a lot of people include lemon juice in their date squares, it just becomes an overload of lemon in the dish. So you have lots of choices when it comes to... Um, there we go. Looking really colorful. It's almost like Christmas in there. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm going to use lime. And you can get a fresh lime. I re recommend that. Uh, this is working well too, and this is what I happen to have on hand. And I'm not going to go buy a lime when I have this right here in front of me. I've got a lot on my plate today anyway. So we've got those fresh ingredients. And we want them to have a chance to simmer and stir. We're going to stir those together because uh, right now the herbs are still at the bottom. But because of the water on top, they're going to be very, uh, very protected from scorching. All right, there we go. Look at that, look at that. Lovely, lovely. About a half cup's worth of fresh parsley right in on top of that. This is just, this is the one of the key ingredients in this dish. Some, that's something you can't miss. If you can't get fresh parsley, hold off on doing this. Don't do this with dried parsley. It's just sad in comparison. All right. Now, I, uh, we added onions there back when we put the celery in. If you have people in your household that are hesitant about onions, they don't like too many onions, I only put what would be a half portion for this dish. And when the recipe goes up, you're going to see a full onion or a full one cup, cups worth of, of onions. If you have people that don't really, aren't really fans of onions and you want to go another way, some dehydrated dried onions are okay. But you do want the flavor, so onion powder. What you want to be careful though, because a lot of people are, they'll say they're onion, uh, they don't like onions, but they're actually onion sensitive, and it may be digestive, it may be full allergy. So make sure you, you know your crowd, and you know um, not only just what they like, but what they're sensitive and what they're allergic to. Uh, this is a dish with so many ingredients, especially in, in the fruit and vegetable land where a lot of allergies lie. Make sure you know what people are allergic to. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn to uh, some canned items. Canned items are great, um, especially canned tomatoes. Canned tomatoes are picked and processed uh, when they're the ripest. You're not going to find a time, um, unless you're growing your own tomatoes, and it's really hard to do that in March, unless you're growing your own tomatoes, not saying you can't, you're not going to get the same flavor as you will out of a can of tomatoes. So diced tomatoes, whole tomatoes, however you want to approach it. I like because so many other things in here are diced to go with diced tomatoes. And diced tomatoes, they say, are the ripest of the bunch. Now, the other thing is canned. This is a bean parve, black bean parve in particular. So I have a bean, uh, uh, canned beans without a whole lot of salt. There's mostly water in here as a protectant. It doesn't mean these la the shelf life on these are much less than you'll get with other canned beans. So check the dates on your cans. You don't want botulism or other fun things that get inside a can. Take your can. Do not pour this right into your pot. That will be a very sad day and an awful flavor. You don't want to go through that. So take any kind of canned beans except for your beans and molasses. Anytime you get canned beans, chickpeas, red kidney beans, white navy beans, whatever you're doing out of a can, go rinse them. And don't just rinse them once. Rinse them twice. Make sure you rinse the bottom of the can because some beans hide down there. Give it a good rinse. A good rinse. So you're not seeing any of those sort of soap bubbles that it often produces. Put your can lid back inside. Just give it a little squeeze on the outside so that can lid doesn't come back out because you're not going to need that can anymore. Toss that can in your recycling bin and in they go. In they go. And now with the beans in there, before you're adding all that liquid that comes with canned tomatoes, you want to give your, your dish a stir. Now just Watch this as I stir it. Just, this is a tremendous mixing. Of, look at the colors. Look at the brightness of this. You want to cook this so that uh, the flavors mingle. The vegetables do begin to cook, but that you don't lose this brightness 
because this is a big part of what this dish is. This is, there's so much else in this meal that's sort of mundane, uh, monotone. You have uh, the kugel coming up. Even the meat compared to this is just sort of very plain. And this brightens up your whole plate. So um, this is a wonderful side dish, as I was saying before, for a number of meals. Um, this is great with fish, tremendous. Hold on to your leftovers and serve, it, serve fish on Friday and use the leftovers. You don't, want, um, you don't want any of this to go to waste. It's a really precious, almost a condiment for so many meals. So freeze it, use it, but don't let it go to waste. And that, that is an important part of keeping, um, even if you're not kosher, keeping Seder, is uh, the meal must not go to waste. So all of these elements get used and used thoroughly. So, tomatoes. Whole can of tomatoes, make sure you hold on to the juice. The original recipe calls for a bit of water. I find, especially if you're using diced tomatoes, there's enough liquid in here, pour it right in. All right, once this is stirred, and you're gonna to wanna to stir this for a couple of minutes, just to make sure it's thoroughly stirred all together. Lovely and colorful. You wanna stir it all together. Can you see that there? Oh, bring in the other camera, have a look there. Yeah. So you want to stir that together, and once that's all together, all right, the one thing I like to dress this up with, just at the end, it's not necessarily in the recipe, but anytime I do kind of a vegetable stew, um, is I get a bay leaf. Um, bay leaf is a, is a cousin of the laurel. Um, many, some laurels are, are not good for you. Uh, these ones are fine. Just two little bay leaves in there, and you're gonna. When you put the lid on, that's just gonna add a wonderful flavor through the whole dish. If you're doing this as a meal, add a half a cup of lentils. Uh, it gives, along with the beans, uh, a lovely source of, of protein and nutrients. If for this meal there's enough protein in the whole dish that uh, the lentils would probably overload it and, and, and overstate it, but feel free to use something like that in there, or add another bean if you like. That's a black bean parve and uh, getting the lamb in the oven. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, may you have a blessed Monday, Thursday and a good meal together with your family.